Hello and welcome to this James the Bike Guy where today I am so excited to be showing off this brand new bike in front of us here. This is the new 2023 Gen 3 version of the Trek Marlin mountain bike. Now, before we get into anything, the reason this is an exciting bike to check out is not only a new platform, a new setup from Trek, but in fact, this is one of the best selling mountain bikes here in America. And I can't wait to share with you the updates they've done for 2023 in this Gen 3 version that I think makes it more compelling than ever before. So if this kind of thing's interesting to you, stick around because we're gonna go over who this bike is made for, the features and designs of the bike, and then of course, we'll end it off with what it weighs. And to start with a quick history lesson on the Trek Marlin. The Trek Marlin is now in its third generation. So that's what we have in front of us here is Gen 3. But some of the uh, riders that have been around for a few years will know that this bike actually lived a life as a Marlin back in the Gary Fisher era. So Trek, they were producing bikes for Gary Fisher. Eventually, Gary Fisher got swallowed in to the entire Trek lineup. And slowly but surely, their mountain bikes, which at the time were revolutionary with 29-inch wheels, with frame geometry that wasn't being seen on other brands, and just really nicely made mountain bikes, came into the fold at Trek. And so as Trek brought this bike in, they used it as their entry-level mountain bike to get people into the sport. But it's important to keep in mind, a bike like this is often not just used for true mountain biking, but instead a one bike to do it all setup. You know, think of people who drive pickup trucks or Jeep Wranglers on the road when really they could get around with a Prius or a small sedan, but instead they want a vehicle with more capability for different days that they might be out using their car, their truck, whatever it might be. And that is exactly what this Marlin is all about. So that means the Trek Marlin needs to be able to combine some mountain biking capability with the ability to be a good do-it-all hybrid almost. And that is where the Marlin has shined for in the past. And what's interesting about this bike is that this bike has really gone a bit more mountain bikey in the Gen 3 version. Let's hit a few of the features that make this bike capable for hybrid duty and more than just mountain biking. Well, the first we're gonna start with is in the back. So Trek Marlins still feature rack mounts for the rear end of the bike, so you can run a rack up on the back end. It's also going to feature a direct mount kickstand. The bike is gonna come in a whole ton of sizes, and in fact, even more than in prior generations, those frame sizes also dictate wheel size. Now this is important because most hybrid bikes either run a 650B, like the new Trek Dual Sport, or a 700C, which is more along the lines of these 29ers that we have here. So quick little tip, 29 inch mountain bike wheels are a 622 millimeter rim diameter, which is really all you need to know that the rim is the same as a 700C wheel. So 700C wheels use a different tire size and because width dictates how tall the tire is, it's an aspect ratio that's set up by the ERTO. Geeky, we don't need to know that. A 29er like this bike in front of us is effectively the same wheel size as what you would get on a 700C hybrid. And where that comes in to make this bike pretty unique is because this bike itself is gonna come in three different wheel sizes. So in the extra, extra small size, this bike comes with 26 inch wheels and those 26 inch wheels allow the frame to scale down be smaller and fit riders that are really coming out of a kid's bike into this one. And then on sizes extra small to small, you can get the bike in a 27 and a half inch wheel. So that's that 650B wheel size and sizes medium all the way up to double extra large come with the 29ers like are shown on this size large bike. So all that's to say that even though a traditional hybrid would run a 700 wheel size, it's pretty cool that this is gonna have wheels dictated by the frame size, which may even give you a little bit better fit for smaller riders. Now past that, allowing this bike to be more capable as a hybrid is gonna be right here on the fork. The fork has a lock and open position. So that means when you turn it down, the suspension is not gonna compress. So for getting up climbs, going through 
you know, faster streets, getting that workout that you want to do, you can leave it closed. Or if you're on rougher terrain, you're on dirt paths, you're actually mountain biking, all of that, you can open up the suspension. From there, what are the things that are going to make this more mountain bike capable? Well, a few things come to mind. The first would be actually back at that suspension fork. On these bikes, we're running a 100 millimeter front suspension fork on all the bikes, extra small and above. And then the extra, extra small version is gonna come with an 80 millimeter front fork. And then out back, you're gonna have this one by drivetrain. Now this is a nice feature on the bike because you only have one ring up front, which means all your shifting is done in back. And in back, you've got a range from 11 to 46, which is a pretty wide gearing range, should give you a good capability of climbing on this bike and being able to use it for some good trail use. Now, some people might find this as a detractor, as a hybrid, because that smaller ring up front, which on this bike is gonna only be a 30 tooth chain ring, that does limit your top speed compared to a bike that has a double or a triple like you might see on the FX Fitness Series bike from Trek. Other cool mountain bike pieces or touches that I like about this is in the frame, this alpha silver aluminum. This aluminum frame from Trek is going to have internal cable routing. You can see the cables going into the frame, keep things nice and tidy. And for the first time with the Marlin, it's going to be a trouble-free setup to go internal dropper. So that means a cable can go in here. It'll go through the bottom bracket and up and allow you to add a dropper post to the back end of the bike. This being the Marlin 6 version, which comes in at $899 or about $50 more than the prior generation, it does not come with a dropper post, but you can add it, or say the top level, the Marlin 8, does come with that. Few more features for mountain biking that matters. Aluminum handlebar on this rig, much wider than the prior generation. A wider handlebar is gonna give you more control. It is running a 31.8 millimeter bar clamp with an aluminum stem. And then of course you have some Tektro hydraulic disc brakes clamping down on two piston calipers around 160 millimeter rotors. And maybe one of my favorite features from the mountain bike side of things are gonna be these XT3 comp tires. Now this is a brand new tire for 2023 and the eagle-eyed viewer might look at this and go, hmm, that looks pretty similar to the Maxxis Ardent, which is kind of interesting because for a little while during the pandemic, Trek was running the Maxxis tires on their Marlin series. And it does make me wonder, did they end up deciding that style of tread design was better than their XR3? Well, I don't know, but I do look forward to having these out on the trail because it looks like a pretty nice tire for this setup. Well, last things to mention on updates for this bike. Well, this is gonna be a totally new geometry. So in prior generations, Gen 2 version of the Trek Marlin, it was definitely set up with geometry more like a hybrid, but this Gen 3 is coming in with a head tube angle of 66 and a half degrees, which is pretty modern and standard for trail bikes today. A C tube angle, nice and steep at 73.4 degrees. A reach, which is much longer than the prior generation of 470 millimeters. And a chainstay length comes in unchanged at 438 millimeters. And what those mean for you when you're on the trail is because the reach has come out further, that's gonna give you more room in the front, more stability, and it's also gonna make that 438 millimeter chainstay, which is a touch on the long side, not super long, feel a bit more playful. But then with the steeper 73.4 degree seat tube angle, the bike will climb a lot better than before. And then of course, that 66 and a half degree head tube angle will make it descend better as well. Now the one detractor when you think about that as a hybrid bike is certainly getting around the city or being able to maneuver quickly in traffic. This bike is gonna feel a little bit more sluggish or cumbersome because it's a longer wheelbase. It's a little bit bigger bike, a little bit slower handling. But on the flip side, that's gonna make it way more capable on a trail. Well anyways, those are the interesting updates and features of this Gen 3 version of the Trek Marlin 6. I personally am pretty excited about it, but not as excited as I am to find out what it weighs. The actual weight of the Trek Marlin 6 in a size large is going to come in and weigh 32.16 pounds. Well, thank you again for joining me to check out this Gen 
3 version of the Trek Marlin 6. Comes out a bit heavier than the prior generation, but that's really not to be a surprise, because as they add capability, they also add weight, and those two things do truly come hand in hand. Well, go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. While you're at it, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and definitely browse the channel to check out more videos like this to see as well.